Well, that means that Bigfoot will receive a buy run in front of this huge New Orleans Superdome crowd in the very first round. John Pine will get a chance to check the course one more time. It'll be interesting to see which lane he takes. After that, Kevin Dabney and the Chi-Town Hustler rear engine machine takes on the Floridian. Clint Dadgett and the Thumper Ford. In the next pairing in the very first round, we'll get a chance to see the number two qualifier, Torres, and of course, Jack Wilman take on St. Louis-based Ray Perkowski in the Evil Force tow truck. And finally, in that first round of monster truck competition, we'll see the new Rocky Mountain Thunder Ford of Nick Jackson taking on a brand new Chevrolet, the Kid Stuff entry. Indeed, with the number one and two qualifiers, Bigfoot and Torres involved in that bitter rivalry. Should they pair up in eliminations, it could be one of the wildest races of the 1990 season so far at U.S. Hobbit Association Racing. But coming up next, the quickest and fastest off-road machines in the world. The U.S. Hobbit Association Super Modified Mud Racers are next. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana, as we get ready for the qualifying round of the U.S. Summit Association Super Modified Mud Racers. First pair of machines rolls to the line. It's going to be the Sand Picker, driven by James Tolleson from Evans, Texas. Long time racer, been in this a long, long time. He'll be going against Keith Metcalf from La Place, Louisiana, with his Jeep. A pair of Chevy-powered machines on the line ready to go as we go into qualifying. They're looking for the fast four machines to come back for the Camel Shootout. Well, you can hear those superchargers wind up. It's the Sandpacker getting there first with a 272. Actually, Tolleson apparently had big-time problems. The front end locking up solid on the machine. You can see he's disappointed. The longtime veteran, a 2.72 second run. But, of course, the first pair, always spectacular with that standing water on the course. The carbureted, gas-burning Jeep funny car of Metcalf runs 2.84 seconds. Believe it or not, still not as quick as Tolleson, even after he had problems. Oh, look at this one. This is called the Stud, driven by Mike Pacina. He's from Medair, Louisiana. He'll be going against Dick Wilson from Dade City, Florida in an 86 team. Dick Wilson, two-time winner of the U.S. Hobbit Association National Trail. Dick Wilson almost hits the disqualification line. He is literally within one foot of that disqualification marker. The two-time winner at 2.43 seconds, getting a little sideways, but really scared in here. And now he locks up the brakes and literally stops within inches of that disqualification zone. In the other lane, Mike Placida, the low-riding T-Roaster, still appears to be too low. He's come back from a crash last year. You can almost see the bug going into the intake. He still runs 2.59 seconds. Well, here come the next pair now. It'll be the mud hole, driven by Larry Dantoni from Biloxi, Mississippi. He's a policeman when he's not mud bog racing, and going against him will be the outrageous. Driven by Larry Kalikas from Kenner, Louisiana. Kalikas with a brand new machine in the near lane, and I'll tell you, look in front of those vehicles. We've already developed some huge ruts that are going to affect the starts of these machines. A Christmas tree start starting these machines. Here we go. This driver's about ready to go. Upside down, it jammed the throttle linkage, just actually the mud against the fuel injection scoop, jammed the throttle linkage open. They finally get the motor shut off, and now they're pulling him out of the car. The policeman from Biloxi, Mississippi, looks okay. We'll have to wait. He's all right. A wild, wild run of it. I'll tell you, the machine seemed to be pretty straight on that run. You can hear the crowd, and obviously, uh, Mr. D'Antoni is more than a little upset about crashing that car. Like I said, it appeared to be plenty straight. The machine missing on a few cylinders, but had a lot of power. Wheels up, then it gets completely sideways at the finish line. You can see the tires dig in as it goes upside down. Then the throttle hangs open, but he manages to get the engine shut off. That was a heck of a move by Larry D'Antoni. The important thing is the roll cage doing its job. 
That's certainly what allowed him to walk away. And as you can see, the crew pushes the machine over. It's really only minimal fiberglass damage to the roof of that 1932 Ford. I don't think it'll be that much work to uh, really get that car running again, Jerry. No, they'll probably be able to get it back running, but boy, look at this. It's going to take a cleaning job. You can see where the throttle linkage uh, actually was hung open. In the meantime, Larry Kalikas over the other lane was running a 2.87 second lap with his brand new, all magnesium, outrageous machine, carbureted Chevrolet entry. Not bad at all for its first effort considering the ruts we've got. Qualifying continues. This is Berserk, driven by Tommy Killingsworth. Tommy is from McComb, Mississippi. And he'll be going against Clay Langley from Kansas City with the Nitro Express. Big wing over the Nitro Express. We're just about ready to go. And Killingsworth getting there first. Whoa! And real close to that disqualification line. Boy, both of them, Clay Langley, uh, as we see here on the replay, had a good run going at 2.89 seconds. The winningest racer in the history of U.S. Hobbit Association mud racing stops just short of that boundary. Here are the 1932 Ford Coupe with fuel-injected Chevrolet power. Watch him get on the brakes. Yeah, you bet. Not locking him up, though. Man knows how to drive, cutting it within inches down there. All right, next up, it's going to be the Terminator, driven by Chuck Jacobs from New Orleans. He'll be going against the Bounty Hunter, driven by Buddy Kuhn of Kentwood, Louisiana. It's an interesting pair of machines. Kuhn with a basically stock Chevy truck. Then, of course, the machine in the far lane, as radical as they come. Machines bog at one point or another on that course. Gouda with the big full body Chevrolet truck engines to come from behind. Watch this launch. Right there at Boggs, he grits his teeth, gets right back into the throttle. The elapsed time, though, for the full body Chevy, three seconds flat, not good enough to get in the quick four. You had to run quicker than 2.84 seconds at this point. And the bounty hunter will not make it into the Camel Shootout semifinals. In the other lane, Chuck Jacobs in the Terminator from New Orleans. The beautiful 89 Chevy S10 had its problems at mid range. He slows to a 4.23 second run. Not nearly as fast as it looked here. Well, qualifying continues here at the Louisiana Superdome. We got lots more mud and monster racing action yet to go, so stay with us. Welcome back to the U.S. Hot Rod Association Mud and Monster Racing Championships, brought to you in part by Kicker High Performance Automotive Speakers by Stillwater Design. Next pair of qualifiers coming up, it's going to be Bubba Clements from Atlanta, Texas. With a 429 cubic inch Ford, he'll be going against Perry Couch from Moss Point, Mississippi with the Crazy Falcon. Track record here at the Superdome is 2.11 seconds. Stops it in time to boot as the Falcon finally makes it across the finish line. Bubba Clements, the veteran campaigner with the all-aluminum Ford Power Jeep, puts down a beauty. You can see the problems right off the line for the original all-steel body Ford Falcon slowing to a 4.35 second elapsed time. Bouncing all over the place doing it. But in the other lane, Bubba Clements was on a blast. It's got to be close to that track mark you just spoke of, Jerry. Look at the starting line launch. The tire speed was the key. Up on top of the mud all the way through. 2.12 seconds. A hundredth of a second off that track mark set last year. Number one qualifier. A great run. This will be Double Trouble, driven by Don Lemke. He's from Netherlands, Texas. Powered by a 454 Chevrolet. He'll be going against Larry Jarrett, who's the defending champion here at the Superdome, from Perry, Oklahoma, in a 468-blown Chevrolet. Easing it up to the line. Here we go. Jerry, you could see that Larry Jarrett was more concerned about going out of bounds in the shutdown area than he really was about putting down a superior elapsed time. 
You can see the double trouble machine, not a bad effort at all, with a pretty decent tire speed, recording an elapsed time of 2.46 seconds. That would have gotten in had it not been for the run in the other lane. Now watch the finish line. The locomotion machine actually shut down before the finish line to try and stay away from those yellow camel disqualification boundaries. His 2.29 second run will get him in the quick four, at least for now. Well, here we go. Qualifying continues with hot stuff. Driven by Ron Reed of Meriden, Mississippi. He'll be going against All Blown Out. Driven by Steve Balthazar of Rhode Island. Supercharged Ford Powered Ranger is in only its second event. On the other lane, the brand new hot stuff with an extremely high center of gravity had some problems in mid range. 2.97 seconds. That won't get him into the final forward, but Baldazard was right there. Again, look at the wheel speed. That's the key in this sport to stay on top of the mud. 2.14 seconds. And that means the number one and number two qualifiers are Ford Powered. Well, we've got one more to go. This will be hyperactive, driven by Darren Matthew. This will round out qualifying. Well, not a bad run for Darren Matthews in the hyperactive machine. He had to go quicker than 2.43 seconds to bump Dick Wilson out of the field. You can see the ruts off the starting line really slowing him down. And the elapsed time, 2.70 seconds for the driver who did so well here one year ago. The hyperactive machine will not be in the Camel Quick 4 shootout. I'll tell you what, Jerry, we've got four absolute killers here. Four machines within 29 thousandths of a second. Led by Bubba Clements, the Texas chances are supercharged Ford. He'll be taking on Florida's Dick Wilson in the 18 machine. The past national event winner in his own right in a Ford and Chevy match. Then Steve Balazard's incredible new Ford Ranger, all blown out, the number two qualifier, and the number four driver, the one and only locomotion that, of course, is powered by Chevrolet, the defending event champion. It's going to be wild. One thing that's definitely wild is the crowd that is here at the Superdome in New Orleans again, Jerry, for, I believe, the fifth straight event now in the 1990 U.S. Hobbit Association Camel Tour. We've got a near-capacity group of people watching this event. Well, it sure is. And get your pencils and paper ready, because we're going to tell you a little bit later how you can be a part of the U.S. Hot Rod Association. Stay with us. Coming up, first round of the Monster Trucks. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Superdome in New Orleans as the U.S. Hot Rod Association Championship Mud Racing and Monster Truck Battle is about to begin. I'm Brett Kepner, along with Jerry Devine. We have completed qualifying, and now it's first round of Monster Truck action, Jerry. First truck coming up, it's going to be Bigfoot, driven tonight by John Pant. John is the low qualifier in tonight's event, so he gets the single by run. like that solo effort and of course John Pyan trying to see how close he can come to a qualifying effort of 4.74 seconds. There you see that new bump that has already affected the racing quite a bit. At 4.88 seconds though, Jerry, he looks like he's doing plenty strong. Beautiful leap there. He certainly made a hard charge on that uh, single run. He really didn't have to run it that hard, but he did it anyway, putting it on a great show for the people here at the Superdome. Like I said, at 4.88 seconds, he's got his work cut out for him. All right, it's the Chi-Town Hustler now, driven by Kevin Dabney. And he'll be going against Thumper 2, driven by Clint Dadgett. Two takes the win. He'll go into the semifinals. A lot of smoke out of the Florida-based board, though. If I had to guess, Jerry, I'd say that was a power steering pump that went away, spraying the hot exhaust headers with the fluid. That's where the smoke comes from. A seesaw battle. You can see the thumper get the whole shot here on the replay. It moves first as it hits that uh, first dirt rise. And at 5.53 seconds, he was not on the best run he could have made. And the other lane at that time, of course, Kevin Dabney had moved in on him, but then stalled, and that allowed the green Ford to cross the line smoking. But still a winner. The Chi-Town machine in the other lane, two-tenths of a second behind that at 5.78 seconds. 
Continuing on now in the first round, here's the next pair of trucks coming to the line. Evil Force, driven tonight by Ray Kowski. This is the 22,000 pound tow truck. We'll be going against Morris, Jack Woman. completely sideways as he lands after the last jump, and indeed, Jack Wilder, the Taurus Chevrolet, will take that win, but not without a wild ride. You certainly have to hand credit as well to Ray Perkowski. The 22,000-pound Ford actually got the hole shot. This thing spent very little time on the ground here before actually hitting the ramp to the cars. At 6.23 seconds, though, at about the half-track point, he found himself well behind the purple Chevrolet from Granite City, Illinois. The Taurus machine, in the meantime, driven by the elder half of the Wilman family racing team, Jack Sr., definitely got some air. You can see Perkowski leaving the line, but keep your eyes on the machine in the other lane as the Taurus Chevrolet lands just once or twice before hitting the car ramp, then hits the air. Watch this bounce, though, that sends it sideways over the finish line area. Perkowski only a half of a truck behind. Locking up the brakes, obviously, to try and keep within the shutdown area. Still a wild battle. This should be interesting as well. Another Ford versus Chevy match. That's right. This is be the kid stuff driven by Norman Grogan. And he'll be going against Rocky Mountain Thunder, Nick Jackson. This will round out our semi-finalists. You can see the Rocky Mountain Thunder machine of Nick Jackson taking quite a ride there, spending very little time on the ground before hitting the ramp to the cars. And I mean very little time. At 6.27 seconds, though, watch him at the finish line as the machine definitely gets crossed up. And Jackson does quite a job of keeping this thing straight, Jerry. Well, that gives us our first round winners and uh, our semifinalists. Let's take a look now at Rocky Mountain Thunder. One more time, watch this machine take two hard bounces. Really, that's the only chance he has to apply throttle before hitting the cars. Then at the finish line, the rear end starts to come around to the right. He definitely keeps himself in a straight mode there with a lot of work in the cockpit. Well, here's our pairings now, Brett, for the semifinal round. Well, the number one and number two qualifiers have advanced into the semifinals, and that's what the crowd is here to see, a possible Bigfoot versus Taurus confrontation. In the second round of competition, actually the semifinals, it will be Bigfoot, John Pyant, the current world championship points leader, taking on the thumper Ford of Clint Daggett from Florida. And in the other pair, it'll be Taurus, Jack Wilman and the Chevrolet taking on Nick Jackson and the Rocky Mountain Thunder Ford. Taurus, the last Chevrolet left in this field, Jerry. Well, the number one qualifier, number two qualifier still in the program, Bigfoot, Ford, and Taurus Chevrolet. It's going to be a battle. Coming up, the Mud and Monsters semifinals. So stay with us. There's only one Air Ford versus Chevy, Florida versus Texas. Here we go. Chances are Bubba Clements doing the driving. Chances are his competitor getting ready to go in the other lane is the A-Team, driven by Dick Wilson. close to that disqualification line. No question. Both drivers on the brakes hard. The Texas driver and the chances are machine Bubba Clements had run 2.12 seconds in the first round. He slows this time. A little bit of tires still on the line at 2.45 seconds. That may have given Dick Wilson the advantage. This ground level shot showed you how sideways he was at the finish line. And by 12 hundredths of a second on the brakes at 2.33 seconds, Wilson goes to the final. But now it's defending champion Larry Jarrett in the far lane against the newcomer. All right, rolling to the line very slowly. Locomotion, Larry Jarrett. And he'll be going against, all blown out, Steve Baltazar. Two machines, and they are poised and ready to go. Winner of this one goes into the final. Here we go. the 
finish line sideways, trying to get into the final round. And I'll tell you what, that was one of the best starting line launches we've seen at this event. It looked like the wheel came off well before the finish line. In fact, it looked like it came off on its own. I don't think it made contact with anything. It's apparently an axle sheared or something. The ground crew going out to salvage. There you see the machine losing the wheel at about the 65-foot marker. Look at the elapsed time. 1.93 seconds. A track record by two-tenths of a second. The first ever one-second elapsed time in the history of this event, Jerry. Can you believe that? He set the track record on three wheels going across the finish line on just three wheels. Look at this launch. Wheels up absolutely perfect. Steve Baldessar in the near lane at 2.39 seconds. He had a great run going, but watch. Completely sideways at the finish line for Larry Jarrett, and he keeps the machine upright. That was certainly uh, a job in itself. What would you say? That, that looks like a part failure. Uh, it seems like it was either a broken axle, like I said, or possibly the A-frame front suspension actually breaking itself. But uh, regardless, it's a miracle that the the exposed part of the axle housing did not dig in and flip that car. There you see it was apparently the A-frame that broke right on the front end. Now we're going to have to find out if defending champ Larry Jarrett, who just set a track record, can fix that thing before the final round. Well, let's take another look at that awesome run. From this angle, you can see that Jarrett got a slight hole shot, leaving with the wheels up. But there you see Baldazard on a good run, actually a little close to the right-hand side of his lane. But now we determine the finalists in the monster truck war, Jerry. Number two, driven by Clint Daget. He'll be going against his competitor, rolling up to the starting line. Big boy. John Payan in the driving. Of course, the number one qualifier, and certainly you have to give credit to Clint Dadgett. He's done a great job with a heavyweight Ford coming out of Florida, making it all the way to the semifinals here. But obviously, Jerry, if he can get around the big blue Ford, it would be the biggest upset of this event. Sure would, Brett. John Pyant, 27 years old, but Clint Dadgett is 10 years younger, just 17 years old, sitting behind the controls of Bumper 2. Certainly has to be one of the youngest monster truck drivers in the country. Does a great job of driving. How many 17-year-olds in the world would love to be doing what this youngster is doing right now, lining up alongside Bigfoot in front of 40,000 fans? Got to be exciting. His quickest run of this event at the 470 zone. Thumper runs 483, and that loss by far his quickest run of the event. Beautiful leap. There you see the smoke as soon as it lands, as again that power steering pump co problem comes back. But in the other lane, Big Foot literally only a few inches out in front. The elapsed time of the Big Blue Ford had to be awesome if Gadget lost in 4.83 seconds. You can see the whole shot, an honest half truck length by Gadget. And by the time they got to the cars, it was almost a full truck length. But here comes Pliant, 4.63 seconds. And a win by less than a foot, Jerry, the quickest run of this event. Well, that means that Bigfoot goes into the final. And the winner of this next race, then, will face Bigfoot. It's going to be Taurus, driven by Jack Woolman, Granite City, Illinois. Going against Rocky Mount Thunder. It's Taurus, the Chevrolet, going into the finals against Bigfoot. A blowout on that one. Nick Jackson never really in the hunt at all. But now that will set up, Jerry, the final round that the fans came to see. Ford and Chevy, Bigfoot versus Taurus. You can see an excellent starting line launch. And a 4.70 second elapsed time and a rough, rough landing for Jack Wilman. That puts him only seven hundredths of a second behind the Bigfoot Ford. This final could be absolute war. It certainly will, Brett. And it's a similar uh, contest that we found last November at the World Finals when Taurus and Bigfoot battled it out. And actually, 
Bigfoot lost that one as he rolled it over. That was the first time Torres got the Bigfoot, but now he has a chance to do it again in front of the highly partisan New Orleans crowd. So far, both machines solidly in the four-second zone, only seven hundredths of a second between them in the semifinal round wins. In the mud racing battle, it'll be Dick Wilson's Florida-based A-Team Chevy Power Jeep against Steve Baldessard's brand-new supercharged Ford Ranger called all blown out in an all-East Coast battle. But coming up in just a few minutes, a visitor from another planet comes to the Superdome, Jerry. Vorian, the jet-powered, transforming robot. Wait till you see what this machine will do. Brett, look at this machine, a beautiful machine owned by Larry Nagel. It has to be one of the most impressive single vehicles in U.S. Harvard Association competition. Larry Nagel out of the Cleveland, Ohio area has put together one of the most astounding spectacles. Listen to the crowd as they are greeted by the extraterrestrial visitor, the one, the only, Vorian. Vorian has got a special message for us. Let's listen in and see what Vorian has to say. I am Torian, and I have traveled far to bring you a message of encouragement from the masters of the galactic vortex. How many of you have come here today to witness the power? Though your technology is primitive by our standards, you have no idea how close you are to extraordinary breakthroughs in the propulsion sciences. I have come to this planet disguised as a mere jet car. When I travel the galaxies, I am able to cruise the velocities and approach the speed of light. Take heart. You need only understand that the only barriers which keep you from this attainment are the limitations in your own beliefs. I am drawn to the spectacles of power by the U.S. Hot Rod Association Circuit of Champions. For it is here that triumph thrives in the heat of competition. It is you who will master the sudden advancement through your desire for greater power. Right here, in this very audience, there are children who possess the gift that will enable mankind to penetrate his present limitations. Young people who will build on the foundations of what you celebrate here today, just as the competitors of the hour have built on the knowledge of those who have gone before them. I have come to kindle the flame of aspiration and warn you to be ready, as the prospects for your future are great indeed. The technical progress you will experience in the next five years will exceed that of the previous 10,000 years of Earth history. So prepare for swift change, and don't be caught asleep at the wheel. Let me show you now what can happen if you allow complacency to rule your life. Understand this, the threat of warfare need not be a concern to your planet. If you remain focused on advancing your technology, you are only a short step away from tapping new and unlimited sources of energy. I must leave you now and return to my secret identity as a jet car. Remember, this is the arena where human ingenuity moves machinery to new limits. So hang in there and enjoy your monsters of rock and roar. 
Very simply, one of the most incredible machines ever on the U.S. Hobbit Association National Event Trail. People love that vehicle. No question, Brett, but here's some vehicles that you're really going to love. The finals of the Super Modifieds and the Monster Trucks. Coming up to the line right now, the two finalists in the Super Modified Mud Racing Division. And what a battle it's going to be. Florida versus Rhode Island. Steve Baldazar, the incredible, all-blown-out, supercharged Ford-powered Ford Ranger in only its second event ever, taking on an already two-time national event winner, Florida's Dick Wilson in the incredible A-Team Jeep. Well, let's watch him now as both drivers get ready. The crew members checking out the finals on the machines. Here we go, coming to the line. This is it. This is for the winner of the Super Modified Division. Wow! Oh no, he goes over the disqualification line. I can't believe it. Wilson wastes a potential win. Look at Baldazar, the left front wheel, two feet in the air at 2.29 seconds. He was on the brakes hard to keep from going out of bounds, but look at the other lane. You can see Wilson at not more than five miles per hour going over the disqualification line. He wastes a run of 2.19 seconds. It would have been good enough for the win. Look how much he gets disqualified by. Maybe 10 feet. He must have almost had a brake failure there in order not to get a stop. But here comes the one we've been waiting for. Taurus, driven by Jack Woolman, going against the big blue Ford from St. Louis, Bigfoot. This could be a heck of a battle. Pyant, of course, we talked about the fact that the youngster behind the wheel of Bigfoot is leading the U.S. Hobbit Association Camel World Championship standings. But the Taurus Chevrolet could move up tremendously with a win here tonight. And John Pyant knows he's got to protect that points lead. Oh, this is going to be an all-out battle, and both drivers are going to have to pedal down all the way. Another Ford and Chevy matchup here in the final round of the Superdome. The U.S. Hobbit Association's National Championship Series continues. This the wildest race of the last two seasons here. Listen to the fans at the Superdome. They are going wild. They are getting ready. They're on their feet for this one. Get ready. Here we go. in that cloud of engine smoke. Simply one of the most fantastic final rounds anyone could ever hope to witness. Ford and Chevrolet with the Ford exploding an engine in the air and winning the event. Their coaching George Smith shakes that Ryan in turn shakes that of Jack Wilman, the loser of the Taurus Chevrolet. What an unbelievable way to finish this event. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what John Pine has to say about this uh, run. After that ride, I would think he would have plenty to say about it. Such a bizarre way to complete that particular battle, blowing the motor and then coming over and actually touching his opponent. But still, he will get the win. John Pyant still somewhere, somehow, has enough inside left to smile about the whole ordeal. So we're going to get a chance to talk to Jack Woolman and John Pyant and also the winner of the Super Modified. That's right, Steve Bottazar, the number the second time out of his supercharged Ford Ranger as the Big Blue team checks the engine damage underneath. The well-known Big Blue Ford of Bob Chandler. That will put them squarely to the number one points position for at least another week. We'll be back with those interviews right after this, so stay with us.
At the conclusion of one of the most amazing nights of competition in U.S. Hobbit Association history, we have our finalists of the Monster Truck War on the floor right now, including Jack Wilman. Jack, you had to be pretty happy with that performance. You picked up a lot of time. Yeah, I felt pretty good. I got in the air over the hump there, and, and of course, it never did come back down on the ground. Uh, the back wheels kind of hit the ground, and I was in the throttle pretty hard, and uh, but she just went way in the air, you know, and of course when you're in the air, you can't make very good time. Any damage at all, Jack? No, it's in good shape. Uh, no damage. Uh, kind of foot run into the back of it there uh, the, with his uh, tire there, run into the rear tire, but no, there's no damage, but Experience had to play a big part in tonight's performance for you. Yeah, and, uh, you know, uh, I've, I've been in that situation a few times, and, uh, of course, the thing that you do when you get in that situation, you rely on the throttle and just keep your foot away from everything else and just push on the throttle. Well, where's Torres headed for next? Uh, my son will be competing down in Tampa. Uh, I'll be going to another event, which uh, my son will have the other truck, the 89, which is our new racer. This is, uh, this is one of our racers, but it's not the latest model we come out with. Well, congratulations, Jack, on a great job. Well, thanks a lot, Brett. Taking a look at the incredible engine-exploding flight of the Bigfoot Ford in the final round, we have John Pyatt, the driver, down on the floor. And, John, at 4.22 seconds, you pulled a tremendous amount of power out of that machine in the final. Yeah, it felt like I had a really good jump off the line. And in the uh, first dirt mound, I got a really good drive towards the cars. And w when I started shifting, going through the gears, I knew that I had a good run going. Well, did Torres get out of his lane, or did you bounce into his lane? No, actually, it's my fault. When I come out the last set of cars, I, it kind of slid towards his side, and I was just on the brakes trying to stop before I hit him. Well, you must be happy with the new design of the truck that you have tonight. Yeah, I am. The Ford Bigfoot turned out really good tonight, and it ran well all night long. I'm real happy with what it did. Well, you had to contend with a lot of different things in that final. Was it as violent as it appeared to be? Yeah, I think on the last run, I might tore the motor up in that one, so we'll have to get it back to the shop and see what happens. See you in Tampa next? Oh, yeah, we'll be down here for sure. Well, congratulations again, John. Great job. Okay, thank you, Brad. We also have Steve Baldazard, the Rhode Island winner of the Super Modified Mud Ranks with us. Can you hear us okay, Steve? Yeah. For a brand new truck, it ran great tonight. Uh, it performed pretty good. It's only the second week that it's been out, so I'm pretty happy with it. Any damage tonight? Uh, no damage at all. Um, we were a little worried because on our first run last week, we uh, hit the wall with it in New York. But we got it back together, thanks to all my friends and everything helping. So we did okay. We're happy. Well, congratulations, Steve. Great job. Okay, thanks, Brett. Certainly some happy drivers there, including Steve Baldazard with a big win and only the second event ever for his brand new supercharged Ford Mud Racer. And Jack Wilbon, Jerry, didn't seem too upset with that runner-up performance at Monster Trucks either. A great night of racing. We'll be back with the 1990 Camel Mud and Monster Point standings. Stay with us. Welcome back. Well, Brett, let's check out the point standings now in the Monster Trucks. Well, Jerry, in the U.S. Hobbit Association Camel Mud Monster World Championship point standings, the Bigfoot team with John White behind the wheel still leads. As a matter of fact, with about a 100-point advantage right now over Chuck Pawkins, the guy they call Psycho in the Excalibur Chevy. The big change was in the number three spot, though. Moving up two positions was uh, Jack Wilbon and, of course, the Taurus Chevrolet based on his runner-up here. And the only other change in the top ten based on this event came in the number eight spot, Ray Perkowski's Evil Force tow truck, the big 22,000-pounder mm -hmm. that we saw qualify well here today, ended up in the number eight position overall going into next week's event. In the super-modified mud racing standings, though, still not much has changed. Two-time world champion Tom Martin in the Mud Patrol, 1932 Ford, still leads with 695 points, about 130 more than the quickest Ford on the Camel Tour this year the incredible mystic warrior of the Ward family from Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, though, in the second half of the top ten, you'll see a few changes, not the least of which has to do with the man who is sitting right down the number ten spot, the ground zero entry. Driven by Jeff Sturkin out of Michigan, who finished number two in the world last year, he has broken into the top ten. Believe it or not, right now, number ten driver has as many points as the number one driver did a year ago. That's how tough things are getting. In the number six spot, the Nitro Express of Missouri's Clay Langley, the winningest mud racer in U.S. Hobbit Association history we saw here tonight, is currently in sixth. In the meantime, we also have, as we pointed out earlier, a very special address that people need to copy down, Jerry, if they want to be a part of this. Well, that's right, Brett. They can become an associate member in the United States Hot Rod Association simply by putting down their name, address, city, state, and zip 
on a postcard or a piece of paper and send it to the address that you see here on the screen. Now you're going to receive advance notice of events that come into your uh, area. You're also going to receive tickets at a discount. Now there's no dues to pay, there's no cards to carry. So make sure that you fill that out today and send it either on a postcard or a piece of paper, your name, your address, city, state, and zip. Do it today so you won't forget and you'll be uh, signed up as an associate member in the United States Hot Rod Association. Should probably point out, Jerry, that something else that people can get are decals, U.S. Hot Rod Association decals, the Camel Bud Monster Series decals, and of course t-shirts, hats, jerseys, and posters. Some of those popular items we see at each and every U.S. Hot Rod Association event. Some 64 U.S. Hot Rod Association events, I might add, this year. And right down, Jerry, with Bigfoot still leading the field, I would seem to think this is probably going to change in the next couple of weeks. I would certainly think so, Brett. But, uh, you know, each and every week, these drivers have to keep the pedal down. The pressure is on. We're going to be going to Tampa next. That's right. Tampa, Florida, the quickest and fastest mud track in the world. Still the only 100-foot-long mud pit with a one-second elapsed tr time track record. And it will be wild. We'll also get a chance to see Tom Martin, the two-time world champion with the Mud Patrol 1932 Ford. He'll be in attendance there and Bigfoot trying to defend that points lead. In any case, on behalf of myself, Brett Kepner, and Jerry Devine, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for being with us on this particular edition of U.S. Hobbit Association's Championship Series. And we'll see you next from Tampa, Florida. Until then, thanks for being with us.